Rich, appreciate you taking the time. We got to see a little bit from Nate Hitton tonight. Can you talk about what you've seen from him this season as far as what he's learning um, as far as, you know, the NBA level of basketball? Yeah, Nate, you know, he's a, he's a quick study. And, uh, you know, he approaches the game the right way. He comes in on off days, as do all the rookies. Um, and I think they're just a good class overall. You know, they, they pay attention, they listen, and, you know, they're learning. Brad? Yeah, Josh. Yeah, Josh, uh, Josh, Josh, Josh I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're aware, but you guys won the uh, division title tonight. The what? The division title. Oh. Yeah. And I wonder what you think that, that signifies for you guys, uh, or, or maybe where that ranks in terms of your terms of in terms of your goals this year. Um, I mean, it's cool, but you know, we really want to start winning things for real in a couple weeks. I think that's. That's the big goal here, but I think it's pretty dope. Uh, Kevin? Hey, Josh, what was the message for this team after a 9-14 and 14 start that sees you now have won 30 of your last 44 games to be in this position to move forward for the rest of the season? Uh, just about resiliency. I think that we had a lot of adversity early in the season that we had to overcome, and I think that the guys did a good job of you know, not putting their heads down, not not pouting, because you know nobody's coming to help you. So, I think we did a good job of just figuring it out. Okay, and then Liliana, I think you heard it, our kid reporter, Liliana, go ahead for Josh. Yeah. Lucas shared his favorite super pre pregame superstition, and what is yours? Uh, my favorite pregame superstition. Uh, I say. Before the games, uh, Dwight Powell and Daryl Armstrong have a handshake, and they like go tonight. And wherever Luca's at, he always goes tomorrow. That's my favorite one. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jay Rich. Thanks, everybody. Liliana, I appreciate you being here. Good I really uh, loved uh, our first half. I thought that defensively we did many, many good things. A couple of mistakes here and there, but. Uh, you know, they made some runs in the second half. The group that finished uh, with Hinton and Green, you know, Brunson, Burke, you know, and Powell or, or uh, Carly Stein did a really good job, you know, uh, holding the fort there. Didn't want to have to put the starters back in. Um, so, you know, props to them. And, uh, you know, it's obviously every win is really important. And we got to see these guys in a couple of days. Brad? Yeah, Rick, uh, it probably wasn't high on your uh, the team's goals, list of goals going into the season, but uh, how meaningful is it to to win the division title, to clinch the division title, and also, you know, for what it could possibly mean in terms of tiebreakers? Well, you know, the, 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 the league has maintained a level of importance with the division. Um, you're referring to the, if it's a three-way tie, it becomes very important. Um, and there are other tie breaking implications as well. So listen, I think it's something that's always worthwhile. Um, it shows that you're, you know, one of the better teams, you know, certainly you know, the best team in, in your region of the, of the league and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's a rivalry division. Uh, you know, the, the Southwest has been, you know, come on, San Antonio, Houston, you know, Memphis, you know, these, these teams, these teams have, uh, have a history of, of a lot of rivalry stuff, a lot of playoff stuff. So, um, you know, it's, it's big, it's big and we'll take it. And, and, uh, you know, like I said, it's important to get this win, try to get it, get it through this game unscathed and, and get ready for Sunday. Eddie. Rick, uh, will uh, Maxi travel on this trip, and do you think it might be possible for him to uh, get back into action on on the, one of those games? It's possible. I do believe he's going to travel. I think all our guys are going to travel. Um, you know, he's uh, he's making progress. Um, I don't see him playing Sunday. That's just my personal opinion. Um, Porzingis, I'm I'm not. As, as certain which you know where where he is exactly uh, but look we gotta we gotta go with what we got you know and who's available and we've been next man up all year and we got to keep it that way
Last one, Prabhat, back sports page. Go ahead. Hi, Coach. Um, can you just talk about what it's been like to see your team win and play so well these last few games without Kristaps Porzingis? And how excited are you to see him come back with the team playing so well right now? Well, we obviously need him back. Um, you know, we have a little different style of play when he is unavailable. And our guys have done a good job with that. Um, when we got a three-headed center, you know, with uh, with Colley Stein, Powell, and 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 Marjanovic, and uh, you know, we we just we try to just figure it out. Um, some nights we got to play smaller, like tonight, you know, with a lot of little guys running around out there. And other nights, you know, you play bigger, uh, you know, with the four spot with Melly and and stuff like that. Um, but not having Cleaver or um, or Porzingis, you know, puts us puts us in a more precarious situation, but we just got to figure it out. And, uh, you know, five games left, every game, super meaningful. Um, we understand it, and we're just going to stay in the present, stick to the process, and keep working. Awesome. Thanks, Coach.